Okay, next up, uh, discussion, possible action. Mark Joseph Phillips, NRS 4.030, bond to the state of Nevada for the faithful performance of duties of the Office of Justice of the Peace. Uh, Pat? I believe Mr. Phillips, this is his request to be on agenda in his presentation. And then I'll have some additional information. Thanks, Commissioners. Um, again, this is um, Tuesday, February 15th, 2011. I'm, I'm Mark Joseph Phillips. This is in, in regards to a discussion, a possible action item, in regards to NS, NRS 4.030, um, a bond to the state of Nevada for the faithful performance of the duties of the Office of the Justice of the Peace. Uh, this also refers to um, Attorney General's opinion 5-6-1905. Just as the peace not qualified to act until the bond is filed, one who has been elected or appointed to the Office of Justice of the Peace or any other office requiring a bond must file an acceptable bond before he is qualified to act. It was after the last meeting I, I looked it up, went to um, Story County Clerk's Office, Vanessa Dufresne and um, found out that um, Judge McGuffey's bond was not on record. So, um, so here I am. Um, it's, each justice of the peace elected or appointed in the state shall, before entering upon the duties of the office, take the oath prescribed by law and execute a bond to the state of Nevada to be approved by the Board of the County Commissioners and furnished at the county's expense in the penal sum of not less than 10000 or more than $50,000, as may be designated by the Board of Commissioners. The bond must be conditioned for the faithful performance of the duties of the office and filed in the office of the county clerk. My only concern is uh, what was um, Judge McGuffey doing in the months before I discovered the lack of bond in, in the um, Story County Clerk's office. As Chairman, I believe I can speak to that. This is uh, one of those situations where um, initially we thought we had this covered. I'll explain how in just a second. Then uh, when Mr. Phillips raised the issue, we went back and checked. Uh, upon further review, uh, we made a determination that we may not have, and this was with consultation with uh, DA Maddox. Uh, and then ultimately we're kind of back to where we were, but as an abundance of caution. In essence, the county maintains a surety bond that I'll provide a copy, uh, again, uh, of correspondence to the commission's clerk. The county maintains a surety bond in the, in the amount of $100,000 that, it is our understanding, has always covered all elected officials with the exception of the treasurer. In our S language for the treasurer is very specific. There needs to be a separate bond. Um, however, again, when the issue was raised, we went back to our insurance carriers. Uh, and said, do we need a separate one for this? Because the language is a little different. And in consultation with, uh, with Mr. Maddox, um, the first call was that, yes, we should have a separate bond based on peculiar language in the statute. Uh, at a later point in time, specifically on February 10th of last week, uh, through Cindy Wiley in my office, we received the following information from uh, our insurance broker, Carol Ingalls, with Ingalls & Associates. Even though I just received confirmation that a specific bond for Mr. McGuffey has been approved, uh, and I believe it's in the amount of $10,000, it says 100, but uh, the county is covered through their policy with Pool Pact. For your convenience, I've attached a copy of the bond, and please note that Story County is specifically named as an insured. Should you need anything further, please let me know. Once again, uh, the district attorney, myself, uh, consulted. We had already made application for a separate bond. This bond is, I believe, a hundred dollars bill. I think we decided for an application for a bond this size. Um, and we instructed our broker, um, plain and simple language from Cindy back to Carol, per Pat and the DA, they want to have this bond from a Guffey issued. And then uh, later on Thursday afternoon from Carol, uh, okay, done. The carrier has informed me that the bond is approved and is being mailed to me. Just for your records, I'll forward their email correspondence. I can't guarantee it'll be here before Tuesday, but I'm guessing I should have it by Saturday. We have not yet received it. We checked the mail about noon today. But in essence, Judge McGuffey is covered by a separate bond and is also covered by our blanket security bond as well. 
is the is the is the bond um, worded according to statute that it is um, okay? Um, what what are the exact words here? The um, conditioned. The bond must be conditioned for the faithful performance of the duties of office and filed in the office of the will, will I find record of that in the, in the county clerk's office after the meeting? Or? Mr. Phillips, as I thought I clearly stated, the second bond has not physically been received by us. I'll read the correspondence one more time again if you wish. It has been issued. So, the carrier, so I'm assuming since the bond must be approved by the commissioners that this will be um, continuing, where, where the bond will be on record and the commissioners will have a chance to uh, approve it. Uh, that'll, I'll defer probably to District Attorney Matt, Maddox, the information I'm looking at from statute. Says. Statute does not say the commission has to approve it. Oh, it sure does. You bet. To be approved by the County Board of Commission, execute a bond to the state to be approved by the Board of County Commissioners and furnished at county expense. Commission. Whatever, whatever we have to do, we're going to do, Mark. Um, the, the bond must be approved by the, the county commissioners. That, that would be a vote. That would be an action. Uh, and it's on the agenda now. The, uh, the bond is not here right now. So I, I, I'd be hoping for a motion to continue the approval of the bond till the next meeting. Well, or you can check back with us once we file the bond. And, uh, we can agendize at the next meeting. For a well, yeah. since the bond must be approved by the commission, that would take a vote. That would be an action item on on on, a, on the on an agenda. And we can put it on the next agenda. I think that's the county manager's function. So. Does that satisfy what you're saying? Well, this, this might. Um, I moved to table this until next meeting until we have the performance bond in our hands. Is that, would that be a discussion action item? If, if the bond's available, then there'd be a vote to approve? Yes. Thanks, commissioners. Appreciate it. Second. Ready okay. for the discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 If I, if I could make an observation, uh, uh, I've been reading those Nevada Vice statutes for 33 years, and every time I read them again, I find something new that I wasn't aware of. And I, and I say this, I did this for seven years once before when I was a district attorney in Carson City. I would continually find statutes that covered the district attorney that I wasn't aware of. And I'm sure if I went back and read them again, I'd find ones that apply to me now. So it, it's fine that you point that out, Mark, but it's certainly not uh, a great failing on the part of the government officials in Story County that some of these lesser statutes, uh, because there's so many of them. Uh, uh, and it, this bond one, I think everybody assumed that uh, the general county bond, because I, I read that I had to have a bond too, and I inquired, and there's a general bond that the county has for its public officials. It was assumed that that bond covered the justice of the peace. But then when we pointed out, uh, we went and read the statute, and <coughs> you were right. And uh, we're doing what we're supposed to do. 
First readings, we reposted all first readings because of that technical procedural issue uh, from the February 1st meetings. Your new first readings are listed there. We are once again visiting the second readings, uh, and these are only second readings from that February 1st meeting. Uh, we don't consider anything else second readings until they've had a proper first reading. It is uh, Dean's and Building Department's recommendation that we approve items one through three, all items as they appear on your agenda. I'll move to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Okay, next up, board comment. Nada. Nada, nada. Bum. I'm just glad to see John Seymour here. This is probably the first time he's been in here, but not been in front of an actual judge, probably. Okay, <laughs> 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 hey, and then I know, uh, uh, county manager's got some other uh, comments. Commissioner, just very briefly, at the uh, at the last meeting or the meeting before that, I don't recall when, uh, you all approved a, uh, an interlocal agreement with Carson City uh, for us to share public guardian services. And I'd like to, to introduce our public guardian who took the time to come up today and picked a great meeting to do so. Uh, Deborah Marceline is here. Deborah, she is a public guardian for those in Story County that need it. And uh, Holly and I had the opportunity to have lunch with her uh, a few days ago together with the uh, Carson City Clerk. Uh, and uh, she will be a great protector and uh, representative of those people. So. Welcome. Oh. And I have nothing, so we're adjourned. <coughs> well, I survived.